Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to see what's new in Student Manager and AceWeb. We are recording the session, and so this recording will be sent to you tomorrow, and it will be posted to the AceWare webinar archives. You can get a full list of all the bug fixes and new features in our forum as well. Since Matthew and Jason have lots to share, I want to get things started with Matthew right away. And be sure to type your questions or comments in the chat box as needed, and I can respond or get those to Matthew and Jason. So with that, Matthew, lead us off. Great. Uh, been uh, pretty busy the last few months, so uh, there isn't a lot to show, but there is some fairly big things coming so we'll see those here in in just a moment uh first thing is there's been uh, quite a few things done with the uh, email link to pay outstanding uh that button that's on the name screen that's uh uh about a year old now but we just keep tweaking it here and there uh, the new thing is the link has the option for the proxy registration so the student clicking on it can also pay off their proxy um, registrations as well as their own so so that's uh, uh, that should help you get some of that money um, also the the email that's going out comes up in a screen the preview screen you can edit the message on the fly you check mark log to CRM and there's a whole a whole host of other controls on it since this is our uh, um, you know fairly generic email form uh, you know carbon copy and and things like that so uh, you you can set those uh, on the fly uh, also, we've added a preference um, to to basically disable that button uh, so that uh, people aren't aren't accidentally hitting it uh, when you're not wanting those uh, emails to go out. So uh, check those out. Come on, uh, pay grabber on the uh, so the F7 uh, keyboard shortcut. Uh, it's it, it now has a search field for payments made to an invoice number so it's had the receipt number so you could put in an, an invoice number there which then would just show you the invoices but if you want to see the payments made to those invoices I've uh, created a separate field uh, for that uh, escrow cleanup so this would be old old escrow registrations that are just sitting there no money is attached to them whatsoever you, this uh, this little tool will clean those out uh, from the, um, out of the system for you and it's just under tools financial um, it does leave any escrow that has a refund to it because those the the payment and the refund still live in escrow so it's not just looking for a zero balance it's looking to make sure there is no money whatsoever tied to those escrow registrations before it cleans them out of the system so uh it's not too big of a deal but yeah clean those up I, I know some of you have hundreds and hundreds of those so uh, this tool should help you there uh, passwords so this is when you're logging into student manager we're now allowing up to 29 characters why 29 char characters it's because the field can actually hold 32 but we need three characters for encryption purposes so it ended up being 29. Um, so you can uh, have have longer passwords, and so you can set that through password maintenance, or have your main user uh, ch um, check mark must change on next login, and then you can uh, do a longer password. 
stronger in that it now allows uppercase and lowercase. Before it was just converting your lowercase password to uppercase. Um, so if you were hitting shift in there, uh, that was being ignored. Um, so the next time you log into Student Manager after the update, uh, your password may not work if you have, you know, if you're just used to typing all lowercase characters, or uh, uh, because it would have been converted to uppercase. So just make sure you type in your password the first time, all uppercase, and then go in and um, uh, change the password through uh, password maintenance. Uh, the reason why we're changing the passwords is not really for student manager uh, security, but since staff can access, you know, as we're doing more things with staff web access online, um, yeah, we're, we're realizing we need to make sure that these passwords are a little bit more secure for AceWeb. So that's the reason for the switch. Um, so yeah, longer, stronger, more secure. Trim date, uh, this, this has been, a, the trim date function has been around for ever, uh, but we've added now a new option. This is, so the second parameter is number eight. And this is, so the first parameter can be any date field. This is just an example using Kobeg date. And what it will return is uh, the, the year, month, day format with hyphens in between instead of slashes. This is uh, uh, SQL standard, uh, SQL Server standard. So that's part of the reason why we wanted to do this. Um, but also some people prefer it um, in this format. Um, not really, well, European is month, is a uh, day month year. So yeah, not not really European, but yeah, so SQL Server. Uh, so it really helps um, with some of the, the other functions where you're trying to, trying to do uh, things against SQL Server, you know, do a query, a specialized query against SQL Server uh, from another function. So that's where this will come in handy um, for that. Uh, another thing we're doing is SQL date. Uh, this new function, uh, so you pass a date field and it returns it into a full readable SQL server based string with the curly brackets, the, the little D at the front and, and the single quotes around that date. Um, Again, that's really to help with um, uh, queries against SQL date when you're when you're trying to do their queries against SQL Server. So, Internet Explorer is going away. Uh, it is approaching the end of the life end of life, and some things, especially security-wise, things just aren't working in Internet Explorer anymore. Uh, we're finding it more and more with, um, um, well, first we were seeing it with the mapping tool, but we're seeing it more and more even with um, trying to do payments from Student Manager. You'd get a blank screen when you would try to use Internet Explorer, and that's some of the, your, um, you know, Microsoft's security. I'm using air quotes, even though you can't see me doing my air quotes. Uh, Microsoft Security is trying to help prevent JavaScript, even though it is the language for scripting on the internet. So not sure why they are doing that. But um, uh, we're, we're just saying, hey, since Internet Explorer is going away, we're going to have Edge be the default browser in Student Manager going forward. So your preferred browser, uh, if you are, if you have Internet Explorer currently as your preferred browser, it's going to switch to Edge in the update. If you've got Chrome or Firefox or anything else, 
that uh, that's going to be left alone. So that's that's not going to change. Uh, partner fees. So if you are using the new partner uh, module, and we'll be talking more about that um, later, but uh, if you are using that, uh, or no, that's the Jason. Are you talking about that here in a bit, or is that yeah, going to be? We, if we've got time. Okay. Yeah. So Jason will talk more about what the partner module actually is. But uh, one of the new things in Student Manager is we're checking to make sure you've got the proper fees, uh, mainly that that base fee, um, and then the the uh, uh, free fee that goes with with the partner registration. So, uh, and it's just a warning. You can um, actually, yeah, it'll keep warning you every time you save the course until you put those fees in place. So, get them in place. Show users. I added the email because I was doing an update for one of my customers and I went to show users and one of the users, like, you know, the phone number listed was the main phone number um, and they were working from home. So I couldn't reach the person. So luckily I had their email address saved in my Outlook to where I could email them, get them out of student manager and complete the update. But it's like, wait a minute, why don't we show the email on the show users area anyway? So yeah, that's, I don't know why we've never done that before, but hey, it's on there now. Juneteenth, uh, this was just added as a federal holiday. So I've gone into the generate federal holidays area and going forward, it will generate uh, that holiday for you um, for the years to come. Obviously it's too late for this year, but hey, you know, Congress passed that in the 59th minute of the 11th hour uh, type of thing. So, hey doing the best we can here. Name imports with a uh, birth date. In talking to people at a conference, they, there were several people that use birth date as a unique identifier. Well, birth date with the first and last name. So if you've got birth date first and last in your spreadsheet that you're importing, uh, Student Manager now asks if you want to dedupe by this. If email is also there, then it gives you the option of both email and the birth date slash name options. So you can uh, do either or or none. Um, it's it's all up to you. Uh, you can't do all three, or you can't do you can't do email and birth date at the same time. That's two different routines. So. Um, that's the only caveat with this. Uh, also, since you guys are doing, you know, doing birth date, I decided to go ahead and add it as an option in the combined duplicate names. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, just another option. Um, um, yeah, and then report by it, export to Excel, preview combined. I will urge a little bit of caution and you'll see my newsletter article tomorrow. Um, I'm not the Matthew, the only Matthew John Olson with my birth date in the world. And I know of this. Um, so full name and birth date aren't as unique as you would hope. Now, luckily, both of us, me and my namesake, haven't ever gone to the same school. So there, you know, with the, all the options out there, um, we've never really crossed paths in that way. Uh, but we, 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 we have contacted each other before. So anyway, um, yeah, it's not 100% foolproof. So definitely when you do preview slash combine, Look through those options and and make sure those people really are 
duplicate uh, people. Uh, before I get into demos, are there any questions, Sharon? There are, and this is related to the very first thing you talked about, the email balance due preference. Can you show folks where that is? We have some yes. questions about that. Thank you. Okay, email. So this, um, um, come on, email link to outstanding, this little check mark right here in the middle, uh, well not middle, middle, but second second column, fourth, fifth down, uh, this check mark. So uncheck that and that will prevent the, uh, the, uh, the box from showing. So this, this box. Other Thank questions? You. That's it for now. Okay. So next thing I wanted to show is under reports, got new options here under AW abandoned cart viewer. So what this does is shows you people who have just in the middle of registering on ACE web, just gave up they closed their browser uh so this um you can email it or you can have um um and, and this is well jason will show more about the aw cart uh, the actual viewer itself so i just want to show from student manager you can run this um, so I'm going to choose the last 15 days. It should only just have one entry because it should be, oh, come on. This was working. Um, thought this was working. Great. Did Edge update their security? I'll have okay. some, uh some slides and demos of that later, Matthew. Okay, good. Um, so this gets you to the login screen. Uh, I don't think, does my Matthew, I, yeah, it doesn't work. Um, ta -da. Whoops. Wow, I got it. Okay, so there are a couple of entries out here besides my test one yesterday. Uh, Sharon looks like she went in and, and did an abandoned cart as well yesterday. Um, so this uh, this does show you who uh, you can click from here. Well, Jason will show more, but uh, you can email um, the person from here. So uh, the options, we came up with for student, oh, there it finally popped up. It just took longer an edge to pop up. Um, okay, so what I really wanna show though is from student manager, we've got the options to do from the last time you ran this procedure. So since I just ran it, it's really just gonna show today. Uh, you can show for the last week or you can show for the last 15 days. Uh, from student manager. There are other options on the page and Jason will get into those. So, so that's the main thing I want to show here. Um, next thing, and this will be pretty much my last, hybrid courses. If, um, let's see, in my demo, I've set up a hybrid course. Da -da -da. And it's it's a the what we define as hybrid is you've got physical in person uh, attendees and you've got virtual attendees. Um, so new course type of hybrid. Uh, so you first want to set that it does have a begin date and end date because it you know it's going to have your sessions then you know in a physical location. Uh, but then it's being transmitted live to virtual attendees 
or I guess it could be recorded and, and done that way. But um, uh, important to note is the way we figure out physical and virtual attendees is if you set up this new column here on the fees with either physical or virtual. So you do need to set up your hybrid courses to have at least two fees, one physical and one virtual. Uh, you can have multiple physical, you can have multiple virtual or, you know, yeah, whatever you're wanting to do. Uh, you can even do membership with it as well. You know, members, members get a discount off the registration fee and off the virtual fee. You can do that. Um, so yeah, all sorts of stuff you could do with this, but just make sure you set each and every fee to have either a P for physical or a V for virtual. And the drop down does show, you know, the, the full wording there. Um, so you got that. What that does as well is you have the hybrid tab. Uh, so you can set a physical max. So this would be different than your your maximum of the course, which maximum of the course would be all physical and virtual seats. You can then have a physical max, you know, num number of people in attendance. Uh, it does show now as of 101, uh, so the last release, it does show what how many physical seats have been taken up. I've actually got six uh, enrollees right now. So uh, I've set this as a 50 max, but you know, virtual, you could probably have 100 in there, but, um, or I don't know, Zoom might cap you out. Go to meeting, I think, caps you at 150, doesn't it, Sharon? And I'm sorry, you're talking about the free Zoom? or it depends on the level yeah. of Zoom they have selected. So if you're doing the free Zoom, um, I don't think there's limits on attendance, but there's limits to the amount of time you have on that session. Ah, okay. Um, well, GoToMeeting though, they limit you to 150 people, don't you? Or is it, again, with the license? It, depend it depends on your license that you've selected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, depending on your license, you can you can set that. Uh, another thing, though, I've added is a URL um, field, and I put this in the comments tab because I think that'll be useful for online courses in addition to hybrid courses. Uh, so you can you can uh, set that up. Now, next thing I wanted to show. Um, oh, let's just go to my student. So, added it, Reggie's. When you're enrolling people, oh, let's just enroll a new person. Add, and let's see who's not in this course. Maybe Jason. Okay, so first, first, you'll note that it it's trying to give it the physical physical fee first because that's the first fee listed. Um, it's telling me that that maximum that I set on the course has been reached. And then it gives, it, from student manager at least, some options for you as a staffer. Ace Web, you're not gonna have you know a lot of these options. So uh, probably in this case, I want to select new fee because I want this person to have a virtual fee. So it highlights the uh, fee field and it assumes that you're gonna have more than just two fees like I've got on my demo course here. So um, I'll select the virtual option so it doesn't warn me against that anymore. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, everybody based on their fee uh, is gonna be given then their, their hybrid status. This field is available uh, by default from um, uh, receipts and from pretty much all the uh, the uh, course quick reports now. Um, 
that wasn't always the case, but yeah, I, we unveiled this at conference and we realized, oh yeah, your guys are gonna need this field. It's called RG hybrid. Um, and what I've done on my receipt, parent receipt, let me see the email. Uh, and then I'm doing the new pound pound. So I've got an if statement in here. If this person is a virtual and Jason is, uh, it's showing the URL and then it shows that that note, that note on the uh, hybrid tab. Um, and well, it doesn't allow you to click links, although this is a for poorly formed link anyway. But um, anyway, it's got the link. Um, so it's got that set up. Uh, since it is on an if, if I go over here to somebody that's not virtual and I print that same receipt, they don't get that. They don't have that information. So you that's way one way you can just send that link um, to your to your to the attendees that are virtual. Um, so last thing I want to show is quick reports. Uh, so what we've done in quite a few of these areas, uh, name roster, attendance roster, all these, uh, I'm just gonna hit sit quick email class. And we've put options, or I've put options for you guys. If you just wanna send something to the physical people, maybe you're wanting to, to remind them, hey, parking spaces are over here, or maybe there's construction on campus and you wanna tell them, about that, um, you you can send a quick email just to the physical people. If there's something that has changed online, um, you know, maybe you're, you, I don't know, for some reason the link has changed. Uh, you need to get that new link to the virtual people. You can just select virtual. Um, also, you know, with rosters, you know, your instructors probably wanting the roster for physical seats and virtual seats to be two separate documents. Um, so that's part of the reason rationale behind having rosters also have these options. So uh, I'll just hit virtual and just my two virtual people are showing up in, in this cursor and then, yeah. So I'm sending just to those two people. Uh, any questions on that? You do have a few questions before um, you finish up, and then let Jason show what this looks like to your to your students. Here's a question about: Can you show again uh, that where your hybrid course type is there, and then go to fees? So there's where you're selecting that you're going to be setting up a hybrid course. Okay. Now go over to fees, and we had a question on where the P and V went. There you see the column where he's showing where you can assign the fees for the in-person, the physical, or which are virtual. So somebody wanted to see that again. Okay. Um, on the hybrid courses, there, there's some question about this respecting the fee limits. So if I want to limit my in-person to 20, and I do want to put a limit to how many can attend online via Zoom or whatever, can you show where you put those fee limits, please? Well, it's not a fee limit. So the physical... Your max. Your max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, physical max is over here on the hybrid tab. So I've got it set to five, which is why, I, and I've used all five seats. Uh, so that's why it's showing me right away that I've hit that limit. So Okay. Now, if they want to limit the online, where can they put that limit? Yep. So that would be uh, your regular maximum. So I've got five physical seats. I've put this at 45 virtual because I'm, you know, 50 minus five. Um, which is fairly arbitrary. I don't, I, it seems like Zoom has, a, or depending on your level, I think like 150, let's say you're 150 maximum online plus your five physical seats. So you would set the course maximum to 155.
which hopefully All right. we have another question that was if they need more information just send me a note folks does the UR, URL field, you know, that link to participate, does that show then on the registration receipt? I'll cover that in uh, in my next. Okay. Coming up. Yep. Yeah, Very you'll have good. to add add this field to your existing receipt, but yeah. Okay, I think I got that. Okay, hybrid courses showing up. Jason's going to show what that looks like on the registration side. Courses running. All right, that's it for now. I may need some clarification on a couple questions, and so I can bring those up in a little bit. Okay. Yep. Uh, so update to the latest student manager, which is 101, and it released Monday. So, yeah, get out there and get it. All right, Jason, I am going to make you the presenter, so you can carry on here. Sounds good. Let me know when you see my screen. We are seeing you. Okay, so what the heck's been going on in AceWeb? I know that a lot of you have uh, really been chomping at the bit for this build. We did some sneak peeks uh, at conference of some of the big conference release features. So um, there's a lot that we're going to cover today. So a lot of these I'm going to zip through. A lot of this, uh, it's going to, there's a little bit of overlap from what Matthew's already covered. But of course, when you have a feature that you know, it's very prevalent in both Student Manager and AceWeb. You know, we're going to end up talking about some of the same things. So a quick look at the big feature releases that we're going to discuss today. Um, obviously, hybrid course types, the new enrollment cart logging and tracking. Uh, we're going to look at the new course editor feature that's available through Manager Web. Um, another one that's technically not a conference release, but it's a big one that people weren't aware of is the, the ability for students to change their workshop selections. And then we'll look at uh, the new feature of instructors being able to add custom dates through attendance tracking when they're in instructor access. And then also with instructors, we're gonna look at the ability to turn on a notification to your office staff when an instructor adds or edits grades through instructor access. And then finally, if we've got time left over, we'll look at that partner enrollment packaging. That's of course that optional module that was re released in build 63 and give that another kind of recap. Um, we're also gonna talk about some of the other smaller features that went in here, but again, we're limited on time. So we're gonna kind of glance through a lot of this stuff. Okay, so first up, hybrid course types. Obviously, Matthew's already explained a lot of this, but it's a way for you to have a both a physical presence and an online presence for a course. So um, again, it allows you to control how many physical seats that you wanna have on the course and how many virtual seats you wanna have. And it's very adaptable um, to, to kind of customize the confirmations that people get um, when they register for this course based on which of those uh, enrollment options that they choose. Um, one thing that we didn't really mention is that through AceWeb, waitlisting is not supported and this does not function with Quick Pick. Obviously with waitlisting, um, if you're offering a, an ability for a course to fill up in its physical seats and then switch over to offering the online uh, virtual seats, then obviously waitlisting isn't a choice that they're going to have there. So keep that in mind when you're looking at building these with your curriculum. All right, so this is the stuff that Matthew has already kind of covered, but we'll recap it. Um, the course setup for this is obviously setting that course type to hybrid, which unlocks that hybrid tab on your course screen. Um, Again, to set your virtual maximum, it's going to be the physical maximum, which is set on that hybrid tab, minus the actual um, course maximum to get your number of virtual seats. And then again, you do have to specify on each of the main fees, whether it's a physical or a virtual seat. So again, the, the CO URL is that new field that is intended to be used as the link to the online meeting. Um, this will show you here in the next slide how you can put this in your registration confirmations, but this is typically where you're gonna wanna put um, whatever link or site or you know URL that they need to click to access 
whatever entails that virtual seat. The co-note ONL field is um, the online note, which again can be printed on that receipt um, or that registration confirmation rather when they select that virtual seat. Uh, so to get these on your ACEWeb registration confirmations, um, and again, you don't have to like take notes here, but this will be in, this is already in the online help where you've got some examples of where you can put that in. But you just basically make this hybrid info section, and in our samples here, we've got a couple of if statements that basically say if there is something in the course URL field, then you know put the label URL and then put whatever is in that field, and then it also says if the fee type is virtual, then put the label virtual attendance notes, and then whatever's in that co-note online field. So as kind of an example there, you can see um, the email confirmation they get uh, contains the message of whatever's stored in that co-note ONL field. Okay, enrollment cart logging and tracking. So Again, we've covered this in our conference releases, so I'm going to switch over to. Oops, I'm going to switch over to another webinar here. And we'll go into the details of this. So, what is, what are we going to talk about with this? Enrollment cart logging, we're going to look at what it does and doesn't do, um, what an abandoned record on the cart is, why people abandon carts. We're going to look at what active cart sessions are, and then how to use the tool to search and refine your results, um, when you should actually follow up with some of these abandoned records, and then how you can use this tool to email the students or export that data. So Matthew showed you how to get to that through Student Manager. Uh, to get to this through AceWeb, you go to your AceWeb admin page, and there is the new link for enrollment cart log. Just click that, and it's going to take you to that main page. So in a nutshell, it's, it's basically going to let you kind of lift the hood on AceWeb and see exactly what is going on with people either adding courses to their cart, successfully registering for the courses, and paying for them or clearing their cart, or in the, the case that is kind of why this feature got built, abandoning those cards. So that's that occurs when they close their browser session or they walk away from their computer for more than that session timeout, which I believe is about an hour. That is gonna cause that cart to become abandoned. Now there isn't any way for us to save an abandoned cart. So there, the, the student doesn't have the option to come back to AceWeb two hours later and have their cart still contain that, that information. Once that cart is abandoned, um, it's not there for them to use anymore. They would need to manually re-add those courses to the cart. Um, the, the cool thing about this tool is it does give you the opportunity to follow up um, if you want to track these and look at um, you know the cases where those abandoned carts uh, exist and then email the students and give them a second chance uh, to get that registration. So when you first get to the enrollment cart screen, um, you won't see the results like I have in this screenshot, but you'll see the filter options down at the bottom there. So um, as Matthew mentioned, in Student Manager, you've got just a couple of options. Um, you know, today, the next, what was it? seven days and 15 days or something, or since your last activity, this does you give you the option to actually put in a specific date range. So if you wanted to get really granular with, you know, where you're looking for these cart entries, you can do that through the Ace Web Admin page tool. Uh, let's see. So the data that gets returned when you choose your selection uh, criteria and you hit refresh, you can see we've got the card ID, not really useful for uh, anything within Student Manager, but you do get the date and time, what session, what um, browser session they had. So if you're using this um, in conjunction with your debug log, that's where you can kind of tie those things together. You've got your course number, your course name, the student ID, their first and last name, and the email. Now, one thing to note about the email there is, again, it is a clickable link, which will use your built-in email provider. So whatever's um, on the PC that you're using, when you click a, a mail to link, 
um, whatever email program that opens up is what this is going to use. It's not actually emailing via ACEWEB's uh, outgoing email system. So um, don't forget if you're working from home and it pulls up your, your local Outlook that is going to be sending from your local account. So keep that in mind. So I kind of got cut off um, because there's a lot of data there, but on the right hand side, um, it also shows you the fee, um, fee type, the amount, um, so on and so forth. The rest is, is not necessarily useful, but on the far right, you have the status. And so you can see um, if you're not filtering by abandoned records, uh, you're gonna see things such as registered or waitlist or active, things like that. So let's take a look at some of those. Chuck, you're uh, you're not on mute. You got a cramp in my left foot. Chuck, <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call the Chuck factor. Okay, so this one here represents what the abandoned records look like. So um, again, typically this is why you're going to be using this tool is to find those abandoned cart records and potentially follow up with those students. Now, again, I mentioned the active records. These are the ones that people actively have courses on their cart. So they are within their session timeout. They are browsing your site. Um, let them let them do their thing and finish their enrollment process. You don't want to email um, active records just because they're they're probably in the process of finishing their registration. So a closer look at your filter options. Again, through the ACEWEB admin page, you can select um, uh, a few preset dates, today, yesterday, last week, or two weeks, um, all of the dates that are in the log. Um, you can choose to only show the main fees. You can choose to just show abandoned cart entries. And then at the bottom section there, um, you can check that option to say activity since last export. So again, if you are exporting to Excel, um, which you can see the, the button next to the refresh button will fire up the export routine. So whatever uh, criteria gets returned by your filter options, when you click that, it's going to export that data to an Excel sheet. And then that will kind of keep track and um, mark those as exported. So if you are just coming here and selecting only show abandoned card entries and then export, and you do this you know, once, once a month or once a week, all you have to do is click the export to Excel and it's just gonna get the ones since your last export. So that can be uh, pretty handy when you use those options in conjunction with that only show current activity, or I'm sorry, only show uh, activity since the last export. So again, we mentioned that this is going to use your default email client on whatever PC that you're using. Um, and just make sure that, again, you're not emailing active people or um, records that were actually registered in the course. So make sure you view that far right column to check the status. All right, so before we go back to our main ones, are there any questions on enrollment cart logging? Nope, I'm not seeing any comments right now. Okay, next up is course editing via Manager Web. So we've added a tool that gives you, um, I can't stress enough, some very basic editing ability to your course records through Manager Web. So again, you do need to have the necessary uh, staff web access um, on your staff account to be able to view Manager Web. Um, and this is a, a very new feature that is definitely in its infancy. Uh, but to give you kind of a just a preview screen here, you can see that we've got the base fields uh, of the course screen that you can modify. And I do uh, have a refresh this here to kind of a live example. Get logged back in. So you have a few different options. Um, you can check this box at the top to include inactive courses if you like. Keep in mind though, if you don't archive your courses very often and you're just deactivating them, this could be a pretty big query. So be careful with that. You don't wanna overload your server or end up clicking that and then having all of your queries take forever. 
Uh, so you choose whichever course. You can use the search box up in the top right here. You say mastering. That's going to filter it down by the courses that match uh, the mastering keyword. Click on that course title to go into the editing screen. Now you'll note that um, we've got some pretty clever JavaScript here that's going to prevent you from modifying fields that you really don't want to mess with through this tool. In Student Manager, you can change a course code on a course, but there are so many different things and processes that that triggers that this AceWeb course editor will not. So for those types of fields that trigger something to happen in Student Manager, those ones are not available yet on the AceWeb course editor. So keep that in mind. You're not going to be able to change course codes. Um, and really anything that has links to other tables, so your fees, your instructors, things like that, those are not going to be editable through this course editor just yet. Um, we do have a lot of the base fields on your main course screen. Your additional UDFs are available. Uh, you do have the comment section and the ACEWeb info. So you can modify your published properties here, you know, set your different publish dates, things like that, which can be handy if you are working from home and you don't have remote access back to your work computer or the ability to log into Student Manager from wherever you're at. This does give you, you know, quite a few useful tools to be able to do this on the fly. Okay. So next up is the workshop changing by students. Um, and again, I mentioned that this has been in there for quite a while, but not too many people were aware of it. Uh, there's a few caveats. So as long as the course hasn't started and uh, the student goes into their, their registration history page and they click on the current registrations button, um, as long as, oops, get out of here. Um, they can't change or remove a workshop that has a fee, and they can't move into a full workshop, so one that's already met its workshop maximum. And if the course hasn't started, but there is a lag days set so that you know you wouldn't normally be able to enroll into that workshop, this is going to prevent them from doing that as well. And then um, they can't enroll out of a workshop that would put them below the workshop minimum for that registration for that course registration. So um, it does have some um, some restrictions, but all in all, it's pretty useful, especially if you're doing like big conferences where your workshops don't necessarily have fees involved, but you want to be, be able to have people make changes at the last minute um, without having to put all that stress on your staff by doing this manually. So um, something to keep in mind. Uh, here's kind of a Quick little preview of what they see when they go into those current select current history um, and then click on whatever course, uh, whatever workshop course is in their history. This is what they'll see there. Next up is the custom dates in attendance tracking. So this gives your instructors the ability via instructor access to add a custom date to their attendance records. So if you know there was a uh, inclement weather day or something like that, and the, and the instructor needed to add a custom date and assign people grades and hours, they can now do that on the fly through ASWEB. So just another way to save your staff members uh, some headaches for doing that manually. So what they see, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, basically that add custom date button. When they click that, they'll have the option to either select one student or multiple students or check the check all to check the all students and then put in whatever their date is and click submit. Also on the instructor side is the notification for when instructors enter grades via instructor access. So if you have an INI file called gradebook.ini and this is again this is just how you enable this create a text file named gradebook.ini put it in your templates folder and then inside that have the line email notice equals and then put the email address of who you want to get these notifications so if you are um, dependent on waiting for your instructors to enter those grades before you can send out course certificates or things like that then this is a handy tool to 
get those notifications as soon as that occurs. Um, partner enrollment packaging. Um, again, this is going to be another webinar, but I'm going to skip over this for right now and cover these other minor features that we've added because we are running out of time. So the instructor minimum enrollment notification, uh, when this email notice goes out uh, about minimum enrollment being met, you can now have the subject line of that email stamped to the instructor's CRM record. The unlimited UDFs uh, has a new function that uh, is called get UUDF that you can stick on a number of different templates such as course status, the enrollment card, or your registration confirmation pages or emails that will pull in those unlimited user-defined fields. So you can really have you know, a whole plethora of different things to add to those pages without having to use up your valuable normal user-defined fields. We've revamped the attachment upload feature. Uh, it's going to do a little bit better handle, handling of duplicate file names. So if they upload the same file multiple times, it'll append a you know, parentheses one, parentheses two to that. It's also gonna stamp the time and date that they uploaded it. And also um, if you're doing this from you know, a, uh, the enrollment process, so on like a registration process, it will actually stamp the course code of uh, what course they're enrolling in when they click this. And again, this is this attachment upload can be used in a number of places. You can put a link to this on person.awp so that they can upload attachments wherever. Um, you know, if, if it's something where they need uh, time to be able to gather documents and then upload them at their leisure, uh, maybe best to put this on the profile page so that they can access that whenever they like. Uh, we've also added a little bit more security to restrict the types of files so they're not uploading any nasty malicious stuff to your server. Um, updated the uh, Elevon payment gateway to support the new Converge uh, API. So if you're using the Elevon, um, I think this has already probably taken place, but should be mentioned nonetheless. Membership course cart recalculation. So this is something that's kind of, kind of sort of worked in the past, but you had to add your membership course before you added the courses that got the discount by, be, by being a member. Um, now it's going to uh, intuitively adjust that cart total no matter what order they put them in. So um, that's just another way to make a little bit more foolproof when your students are adding those courses to their cart. ASS Jason, we lost audio on you. Oh, sorry. There you are. I thought I hit something. Uh, so escrow on ASWeb has been in for a few builds, but now you have the ability to toggle that on or off on a course by course basis um, on that ASWeb info tab of the course screen. It's just that checkbox there that says, don't allow people to use their escrow for this course. The cancel reg feature uh, that has been available for students is now available for staff members using Manager Web. So just log in as you normally do. And over on the right, you'll see the cancel registrations. Um, this is obviously, uh, you have a little bit less restrictions than the students do as far as canceling goes. But again, depending on how you have it configured, um, there's a, a few different uh, caveats here. So again, as a staff member, you can have it restricted to doing free and waitlisted courses only, or you can say you can cancel everything. Uh, just keep in mind that this isn't going to be doing anything with refunds. So um, if you do have that allow all, make sure that you follow up and do the refund manually from within Student Manager later. Multi-proxy registration. Uh, this has a new mode that allows you to select multiple proxy candidates at the same time. So um, instead of having to individually register each of your kids in the piano lessons or summer camp class, you can now uh, select them all at the same time and get that all done in one fell swoop. So the, um, the things that you'll might run into 
they're, they all have to have the same main fee or, or optional fees that you select. You basically select that one time and that applies that to all of the selected proxy registrants in the process. So you can't have individual ones, um, individual fees on that. Along the same lines, MultiProxy also now supports firms. So if you, if your name record in Student Manager has the uh, checkbox that says allowed to proxy register firm on ACEWeb, then when you enter the proxy registration screen, you'll be presented with two options to either show work contacts or show personal contacts. Um, and again, the same thing applies. You can select one person or multiple people, but again, it's all gonna use that same uh, fee selection that you use during that process. Uh, I got a message flashing here. Okay, yep. Uh, next up is editable instructor profiles. If you enable this, if you put this link on your instructor access page, they can now click that My Profile link and get some basic editing ability to their profile. Um, you can control which of these fields show up on the um, edit screen, and I would kind of be careful, you know, look at how your instructor info pages are set up. If you're using the HTML bio, keep in mind that's something that could be public facing and um, editable on the fly by your instructors if you edit this and that field is enabled. So you don't want some disgrunt disgruntled instructor that you know got, didn't get his, uh, his courses ran to go in and, and post something nasty on his bio. So just keep in mind that granting that access does come with some inherent risks, but you do have the ability to control that. Some INI editor enhancements, just some sort of quality of life tools here. You've got the ability to select by key or category and have it remember that selection. So if you want it to be alphabetical by default, you can do that. Um, there are alphabetical links that you can click to quickly get to a particular section and then a link to bring you back up to the top. So handy, very handy for us as techs, but some of you will appreciate that as well. So your instructor lists on your course status pages. If you had multiple instructors, they would basically show in the order that they were added to the course. You can now um, specify, or the default now is by last name first, but you can also customize that template and uh, specify what sort order you want them in. Um, also, if they show up on the course pop-up, the hover pop-up, you can also change the order there just to modify that. XO show schedule template. All right, so finally getting to some of the newer stuff. Uh, invoice numbering for ACEWeb. So you can now have ACEWeb assign a, an invoice number, so the number that starts with a V, when they are creating uh, billing or invoice records on ACEWeb. So if you do like payment plans, um, things like that, or you do a lot of online billing, this can be great, especially if your normal process uh, and student manager is to assign the invoice numbers um, you know at the time that you create the billing this allows the students to basically do the same thing it also has the benefit of them being able to go right in and say pay invoices um, through their um, their profile page through their course history so uh, obviously it only applies to the courses that allow billing and you can enable this by adding the gen venum um, parameter to your alt settings in your ACEWeb I. Uh, we do have information on this in the online help already, I believe. Uh, if you need more info, just get with your tech and we can help you get that set up. Also on the registration history page, uh, there is now a uh, other courses button. So courses that don't have begin and end dates can have their own separate little section uh, called other courses. Um, all you need is either an updated copy of show, show trans status, or you can get with your tech to just add the um, HTML for that button to show up if you've already got customizations and things. There's also some a new phrasebook entry under reg status that allows you to customize what text is shown when none of those courses are found. So if they click it and there aren't any quote unquote other courses, you can customize the text that shows there. And then a tune-up for the ACEWeb admin page tool. This is the evaluate string expressions, expressions, excuse me. So if you go to the ACEWeb admin page and you click the AW viewer option, you might've noticed this box before. It allows you to 
uh, test out a an ace web function so those functions that start with pound pound and have all that gibberish in between you can test that on the fly without having to make changes to your live templates so that can be pretty handy if you are wanting to experiment with some of the different function options and parameters um, so folks asking about student self-canceling how's that set up um, there is a if, when we get to the end of these last couple slides here um, I will see if I can do a quick little demo of that. So yeah, so here's an example of an ASWIP function. They always start with pound pound and end with pound pound and have a whole bunch of stuff in between there. So, all right, so questions, uh, the self canceling. Uh, what I would say is the best way to find out is go to the online help and do a search cancel courses that's through student manager so here's another fun option here if you want to just filter you say i want i know this is through aceweb so uh, if i select aceweb over here and i search for cancel how do we do that let's see oh, i thought i just saw it too so here we go through staff web access, cancel registrations. So this is more for the staff, but I figured there would be a link to the student cancel option. Let me go back here. There it is. Don't know why that didn't get flagged in the uh, the Ace Web one, but so you got to have build 62 or later, and it's going to take a Let's see. I think there is an. I thought there was an I and I setting. Sorry, this just isn't fresh on my brain. But so by and default, I'm you glad cancel. to just send that information to everybody yeah. tomorrow with the um, with um, the recording and things. The words are hard sometimes to get out when you're reading and talking at the same time. So boy, folks, thanks for hanging in there with us. If you have other questions, send me a, a line and I can answer those individually. I am going to take over and make myself the presenter so I can show you some of the upcoming trainings. Hopefully you are seeing my screen now. Yes, in August, uh, Matthew is going to lead us in September, lead us through a three-part series of using the report wizard. So if you've had questions or if you are using it and want to know everything that's new, you want to join us then. And then we have on request from every one of our student manager boot camp uh, graduates wanted an ACEWEB boot camp, and that's coming up in, up in September. So you want to get that on your calendars, but we are ready to take registrations for that too. So with that, folks, thanks for hanging in there with us, send me your questions, I'll get you your answers, and we will be talking more about that partner enrollment package. It is an awesome module, letting you fill those seats, letting your students bring a, a guest or a partner or a friend for a reduced price, a way to sell more um, seats, and to get more people interested in your program. So be on the lookout for that. So with that, we're going to say goodbye. Matthew, Jason, thanks so much for sharing all of this and all the hard work you put behind it. Have a good upcoming weekend, everyone. Bye-bye now.